Fox News alert. President Trump's impeachment trial is about to enter a whole new stage as we wait the beginning of the question and answer session. This is Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell is telling colleagues the GOP does not yet have the votes to block impeachment witnesses. An initial vote is expected on Friday. President Trump today tweeting that House Democrats allowed no witnesses for his side. And Republican Senator Josh Hawley also says that Democrats can't have it both ways. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if we're going to do witnesses, my view is that we got to call Hunter Biden, Joe Biden, and Adam Schiff. I mean, Adam Schiff, did he talk? We know he talked to the whistleblower. What did he say? What did his staff advise him? We need to learn that stuff. But Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer says trials like this need witnesses. I remain hopeful that four Republican senators will join us in supporting witnesses and documents in this trial. It's an uphill fight, as I've always said, but the public is on our side and truth, above all, is on our side. And that's why we're still in the fight. Meanwhile, Fox News has learned that Senate Republicans are developing a Plan B strategy. If a number of Republicans break away in support of calling witnesses, one option, a resolution calling for a package of witnesses, including Hunter Biden, that's unlikely to win support in the Senate. A second option, the White House asserting executive privilege to block witnesses like John Bolton. This is Outnumbered, and I'm Melissa Francis. Here today is Harris Faulkner, Fox Business Network anchor Diggin McDowell, Executive Director of the Serve America PAC and Fox News contributor Marie Herf. And in the center seat today, Senior Editor of The Federalist, Christopher Bedford. He is outnumbered. Chris, before I get your reaction, I just want to play for you. So, so we heard Republicans calling for um, Hunter Biden, but now there's at least one Democrat on board. Listen. Is Hunter Biden a relevant witness, Senator? Uh, you know, I, I think so. I really do. I don't have a problem there because this is why we are where we are. Now, I think that he can clear himself, uh, what I know and what I've heard, but being afraid to put anybody that might have pertinent information is wrong, no matter if you're a Democrat or Republican. So, Chris, I'm starting to feel like this whole witness thing is a game of chicken, that both sides, I think it could be out of control and bad news for both of them. Maybe the Democrats' best position is to scream for them and have them not happen. And then they can say we were denied witnesses. What do you think? Yeah, you're right in that, I think. It's a win-win for Democrats to do that because if they could scream and yell and Republicans say, no, we're not going to cross that witness Rubicon, then it, they could de help delegitimize the Republican Senate in the eyes of the American people and say, see, this was a sham process, score political points that way. But if they do decide to cross that line and start allowing witnesses, this, this could drag on for months and months and months. And if there's a major thing that comes for the Senate, maybe a Supreme Court vacancy or something like that, the Democrats could tie it up with unending investigations, hobble the president. And we've seen this playbook before. It's Kavanaugh 2.0, exactly. Harris? You know, I am kind of concentrating on what's going on with Senator Lindsey Graham this morning. He came right. out with a statement a short time ago and an answer back to some tweets. That it looked like he was talking directly to the president and what he said. Yeah. And I, I wonder, you know, the president makes the calculation often to help himself in his defense. Senator Graham saying this, I'm concerned when John Bolton's credibility is attacked, speaking of witnesses, it makes it more likely some will feel the need to call him as a witness. Yeah. Just so we put it into context, the president previously in a series of tweets said, for a guy who couldn't get approved for the ambassador to the UN years ago, couldn't get approved for anything since, begged me for a non-Senate approved job, which I gave him despite many saying don't do it, <laughs> uh, takes the job mistakenly, says Libyan model on TV, and, and it goes on. <laughs> That's just the first of the tweet. What do you make of that? John Bolton is certainly someone that's been an ally of Senator Lindsey Graham, an ally of George W. Bush, an ally of a lot of the people who are more hawkish on foreign policy in the GOP. But it seems much, it seemed always clear for a lot of people in Washington who are scratching their heads when he came on with the Trump administration because his foreign policy and theirs aren't the same. He came on, he had a bunch of wars and hawkish foreign policy positions he wanted to push. So he why do you think the president hired him? Because, you know, I think the president likes people who are sharp and combative and he sees them on television and people like him in Washington, D.C. And John Bolton is, say what you will about him, is certainly very combative. <laughs> but, Marie, I mean, that was, it, his point was, Mr. President, the more you attack John Bolton, the more likely it is we need to call him as a witness. Because otherwise, we could just take what he's saying and, you know, put it in the mix with everything else and consider it, 
Like, you're not doing yourself any favors by attacking him on Twitter. Absolutely. And John Kelly yesterday came out and said that he thinks John Bolton is telling the truth. What Bolton has reportedly written in this book is consistent with a lot of other testimony that we're hearing. And what I've heard is that a number of Republican senators are saying, look, if we don't hear from him as part of this trial and his book comes out in three months and has even worse information for the president, like, we need to get it out now as part of this, because if we all vote to acquit him or vote not to have witnesses and then his book comes out, that's a problem for for us. And, and one thing I, I think yesterday that Joni Ernst said that a lot of Democrats are picking up on, speaking to the partisan nature of this, she said, you know, her home state, obviously, the caucus is on Monday. And she said, caucus goers in Iowa, they may change their minds about Joe Biden. You know, they may be changing their minds based on what we're putting out about Joe Biden. That's a paraphrase. It's not a direct quote. But a lot of Democrats are saying, wait a second. You all are using this to hurt Joe Biden politically. That's what we've been accusing you of doing. Like she gave the game away publicly. And that's an interesting piece of this that Democrats have picked up on uh, in the last 24 hours. Meanwhile, three vulnerable Democrats reportedly considering voting to acquit President Trump on at least one of the two articles of impeachment. Politico naming Senators Joe Manchin of West Virginia, Kirsten Sinema of Arizona, and Doug Jones of Alabama as Democrats who remain undecided. President Trump weighing in, tweeting, quote, There is much talk that certain Democrats are going to be voting with Republicans on the impeachment hoax so that the Senate can get back to the business of taking care of the American people. Sorry, but crying Chuck Schumer will never let that happen. Dagan, I'll go to you first. I mean, I hear Juan Williams quote to you on the five a lot when you're there. The, the uh, 51 percent of Americans want the president. That, that's an old poll or it's out of date because real clear politics. 47.5% say yes, remove. Mm -hmm. um, you know, 47.9 say no. There's only one poll where it's 51. In other words, it's going in the president's direction. What does that mean for Democrats? Well, it, I think for all of these senators that all at the end of the day they only need to step back and ask, are we going to vote to remove a president nine months from an election? Do we believe in the right to vote and allow the American people, the American citizens, to make that decision? That's the only question that any of these senators have to answer. And I'll point to Karl Rove because he called this. This was a week and a half ago or more, and he said it on the Fox News channel more than once. He said, looking, you've got a number of Democrats, Joe Manchin, Doug Jones in Alabama, who've made some temperate comments about voting for acquittal, restrained comments. You, he said that you've got, like Kamala Harris, she's going to vote. She's going to vote to convict the president and remove him from office. But he said, he was talking about uh, comments Manchin told uh, another network at one point. I think it weighs on everybody. I'm very much torn by this. So they're being very careful. And are you gonna are you gonna leave it up to your con your constituents, the American people, or are you gonna take this in your own hands? I just think that being careful is what they're supposed to be, right? There, there originally was going to be penalty if you spoke up. Now we have some people, I guess, not even paying attention. But <laughs> in that, you know, as the, as the whole trial is going on, some of the senators being accused of snoozing or playing with toys or whatever. They don't like to pay attention. Right, but but I mean there was going to be punishment for speaking up. So this is the opposite of what we're actually seeing. I, I'm I, I I don't trust what people say until they actually take a vote. Right. No, I right. agree with that. It's yeah. totally agree political. with that. I totally agree with Harris. Yeah. So much is happening behind the scenes here. Until they actually pull that lever. Yeah. I'm with it. If their Absolutely. lips are moving Who here in America thinks there are undecided senators on this in real life. Like I, actually undecided. I think there might be. Really? I don't know. I, I, I think surprised. it's all political on every side. They're all hypocrites, every one of them. All right. <laughs> Did Joe Biden cross the line? Why wow. he's under fire for how he handled a voter in Iowa? The testy and touchy exchange and why this is hardly the first time. We come in with this Fox News alert, a potentially game-changing new phase in President Trump's Senate impeachment trial as we await the beginning of the Q&A period now. Senators will submit written questions to House managers and President Trump's defense attorneys as a fight looms over potentially calling witnesses. Our special coverage begins with it all at the bottom of the hour. Brett Baer, Martha McCallum, keep watching. 
what are we going to do about climate change? Now, I, you say you say you're against pipelines, but then you want to replace these gas lines. That's not going to work. We can't. We, we got to stop building and replacing pipelines. Go vote for somebody else. All right. Thanks so much, sir. Guys, we're going to have you. Thank you, you so much. Thank you so much. Primary. I'm going to vote you in the general if you treat me. Yeah, I know. Well, <laughs> well, I'm not. Well, can I? Have, can I have Look, you you're you asking a picture of me. You're coming up and tell me you don't support me. No, no, no. My plan. Yeah, you did. You said you I said I would support you in the general. In the general. I'm looking for a primary. Wow, wow, Ooh. wow. Did you get it? Go vote for somebody else. Whew. Joe Biden raising eyebrows in Iowa after getting in a heated confrontation there with a climate activist over pipelines. The 2020 contender at times poking and touching the man's name is Ed Fallon, who served in Iowa's General Assembly, telling him to take his vote elsewhere. Fallon, who told Biden he's backing Tom Steyer in the primary, called the interaction disturbing on a number of levels. And then he wrote this, quote, what was even more shocking was how Biden pushed and poked me. And I shape on, let's do push-ups together here, man. Let's do, let's run. Let's do whatever you want to do. Let's take a nice pizza. Hmm. <laughs> so, uh, wow, where do you even start? I thought it was interesting that Joe Biden told the man to vote elsewhere, and the man said, but I am going to vote for you if you make it through in the general if you treat me right. Well, I, that was obviously a play to get some airtime. I, I think it's really unseemly to ever see a grown man complaining. Like, he pushed me, he poked me. But yeah. if that happens, it's, you can, you, the guy was fine. He was physically fine. But that shows you some of the, some of the tiredness and fatigue that these politicians are having and their, willing, that their willingness to get angry at people and also to block out opponents of their political ideas on oh, the campaign. See, trail. I totally disagree with you. I have the opposite point of view. I think that, first of all, you can't put your hands on anybody anymore for any reason. You just Amen. can't. You just can't. It's, we don't live in that society anymore. You can't hold on, to, even if he didn't hurt him or whatever you think about him complaining, can't put your hands on people. On yeah, the other amen, hand, hallelujah. Yeah, on the other hand, I love his feistiness. I mean, I love, rather than lying and kissing Tukas to get the vote, he's saying, no, this is what my position is. I mean, I yeah. think it's great. He, and, and it's what people like about Joe Biden, right? Because he's a straight shooter. He's, you know, sometimes he's not always politically correct or whatever, but he will say, you know, the push-up thing. We laugh at that here, but that often, often in the room, people laugh at it. It's yeah. really funny. And he's not overly rehearsed important thing is, and I'm throwing out tips, you must listen. That's all you need to do is just carefully listen to what the person is saying and respond to it. He, Joe Biden, though, gave himself away. There's much to dissect in this, but he immediately thought the guy was a Bernie Sanders supporter. I know. Is that not his <laughs> And he said, I'm voting for yeah. Tom Steyer. That's his kryptonite. But I would no. vote for you in the election. Who's voting and for the Tom general Steyer? If you make it through. <laughs> it's, it's him and Tom, I guess. But Dagan's so right. He gave away what his weakness was. He said, are you a Bernie Sanders supporter? Well, I right. think we all know that, that it's Biden versus Bernie at the top right now, just statistically. So right. that's not like a big secret. But all the guys right. said was something about this. pipeline. We, and he's like, Bernie! We, <laughs> we have an abbreviated outnumbered because our big coverage of the impeachment trial continues at the bottom of the hour. So let's scoot. The New York Times is reporting that Biden officials floated the idea of forming an alliance with Amy Klobuchar when they get to Iowa where, quote, the two campaigns could encourage their supporters in the state to back the other candidate in precincts where they fall short of the 15 percent threshold required to reach the second round of balloting. But Amy Klobuchar is reportedly not interested. Chris? What do they think the voters of Iowa are, just pieces to be traded amongst the campaigns? I mean, that's, that's kind of how a caucus idea. works. But, but that's how a caucus works, right? After the first ballot, you, you literally have people in the room trying to move people over to your side. This is actually really smart because Klobuchar has been gaining. And I think that this is super smart because she's been taken away from Biden. But it wait, is, but, but what would she get in publicly. return, though? Because it's the vice president. You have to. Well, that's what I'm saying. Has he promised that? That's where I was going. I, I don't know. Isn't that too much moderate on one ticket, though? I mean, think about that. If they were to get together, I mean, what are you going to do? With all those Bernie supporters. Not if the other ticket is Donald Trump and, uh, and Pence. I mean, the, mo the, the left might support a moderate Democrat. There are no moderate Democrats. Them. They all want to raise your taxes. Even Joe it's Biden what, wants to raise your taxes to 50%. Wow. All right. On that happy a, note. A CNN, <laughs> a CNN panel is facing some major backlash today after bashing President Trump supporters as being gullible and illiterate. The host on Lemon trying to defend himself and how Republicans are trying to use it to their advantage. Stay tuned. And this is developing just minutes from now. 
Our special coverage begins. President Trump's Senate impeachment trial enters the question and answer phase. This after the president's defense team wrapped up its opening statements yesterday. The questioning of the House impeachment managers and the president's attorneys is expected to last two days. Donald Trump couldn't find Ukraine on a map if you had the letter U and a picture of an actual physical crane <laughs> next to it. He knows that this is, you know, an, an administration defined by ignorance of the world. And so that's partly him playing to their base and playing to their audience, uh, you know, the, the, the credulous boomer rube demo that backs Donald Trump. Um, that, that wants to think that, that, that Donald Trump's a smart one and they're, oh, y'all, y'all, y'all elitists are dumb. <laughs> you, you elitists with your geography and your maps and your spelling, even though my path and you're reading. <laughs> yeah, you're reading. So that portion of a CNN panel discussion prompting anchor Don Lemon to address the mockery of President Trump and specifically his supporters, suggesting they are uneducated and illiterate. The clip blowing up on social media with CNN's former digital producer tweeting, the arrogance, the dismissiveness, the smug cackling, the accents. If Donald Trump wins re-election this year, I'll remember this brief CNN segment as the perfect encapsulation for why it happened. Last night, Don Lemon offering this explanation. Ask anyone who knows me. They'll tell you. I don't believe in belittling people. During an interview on Saturday night, one of my guests said something that made me laugh. And while in the moment, I found that joke humorous. And I didn't catch everything that was said. Just to make this perfectly clear, I was laughing at the joke and not at any group of people. I don't understand how that would make it better. That's one of those sorry, not sorry. It was very clear. I think he was trying to say at one point that he was laughing at the president as opposed to his supporters, you could hear very clearly when he said the boomer rube, rube supporters, whatever. It's word goulash and nobody's pig eating it. Nobody's gobbling up that explanation for why that happened. But what did happen was those guys pull back the curtain on what's really going on. The liberal media elite and many liberals in this country to quote Greg Gutfeld, they don't just hate Donald Trump, they hate you. Every one of us let has them, seen this let them under the cameras let, are off. I've lived this my whole life. Exactly. Let, the, let them underestimate you. Let them call you a rube and a redneck and a hayseed and a hillbilly and you ignorant nobody. But you know what? L you'll sneak up on them and you'll win and you'll take them by surprise and you can watch them weep and moan and clutch their chest when you win again. Wait, wait a second though. Rick Wilson, who made the first joke, is a Republican? No, he's no, not. He's not. Oh, no, he's not. Okay, he's a Republican he, strategist. So, he doesn't have any campaign. And I'm Dolly Parton. Can I just a say Republican. this? Also, you guys don't get to decide who's a Republican. He's a GOP strategist who has worked for many who's Republicans. Who's What difference does that make? There are a lot of... Dagan just said it's the never liberal Trumpers. media elite. It's it not... It is. So, let's just be very clear. But second, I, I think that this like was a bad cable segment and got out of control and like you laughing on like it was just bad TV and Not it got out of joke. control but but to be fair all of this pearl clutching about liberals being demeaning to Donald Trump and his supporters Donald Trump says the most demeaning things about people every single day so I'm sorry like Bear me I'm, not I'm, I'm, I'm not offended by this. I'm not offended by this because I'm used to this. Uh, when I, before I even started working in TV, somebody very, very brilliantly told me, you go home at the end of the day. Don't go to these cocktail parties. Don't go to these galas. These people hate you. They despise where you come from. Do you and think they I will, hate you and, and despise where you, you come You don't from? live in New York City. But I'm and a they liberal don't, who lives in Washington. I think that they laugh at anybody who speaks with an accent. The the go-to is that you're ignorant and you go, my, some Somebody told me, you go and call your mom and call your daddy and you remember where you came from, that your life and your direction is about community, friends, family, country, and yeah. God. And that's See, what they forget. I'm not pearl clutching because I'm offended. I, I can't believe how dumb they are to insult the people that support President Trump when they want a different president. They don't realize if you don't agree with the left, you're dumb. Yeah, you know, I just, I, I watch all of this and I think about what happens in this country when breaking news happens. And I, I, I look at Don Lemon and I think, your credibility. I mean, we, we're at some places at a serious point in our history. There's serious things to talk about. And as I look at him hit his forehead on the desk as he's a good find, I mean, we all find things funny at different times. 
But it matters in those moments when you've got everybody looking at you and depending on you to bring them serious news. Are they going to take him out of that chair when it gets serious? Because this is a dig at CNN's credibility, too. I, you know? I don't think and, so. I think it's a segment that got out of control. And, and like I've lived I've lived with this for 25 but, but years like, and they mock you and laugh at you behind your you back. Say, and that they actually revealed how they really feel say, about much of this. Dagan, when you say they or all of them or all of the liberals, it's, it's what you're criticizing about about what you think liberals are doing all liberals don't feel that way you and i are friends they don't, I don't know why hillary way. lost clearly so all liberals don't feel that way don't do the same thing you I feel like it's being done feel, to you i don't okay. think you feel that way well that was an exciting show chris bedford the rest of the couch thank you so much for being here we're going to turn it over to martha mccallum and brett bear live in washington